Okay, hi everyone. Hopefully uh, you can all see this. Uh, let me just make sure that it's recording. Yep, it appears to be. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, welcome. Um, in this um, presentation today, what I want to do is I want to talk about sort of the susceptibility uh, of yourself and your loved ones uh, to sort of the coronavirus. I want to give you some more information, some more facts about the virus. And uh, then I want to talk about sort of a little bit about sort of the actual, um, give you some figures uh, to look at as well. And then I want to finish off with uh, the actual the key nutrients that you should consider taking at the moment. Because one of the, uh, the best ways that you can serve yourself and your family and help yourselves is by making sure that you are taking the right nutrition at the moment. Okay, um, So we're going to cover that in, in a little bit of detail as well. So... There's a lot of fear out there, um, there's a lot of concern and worries and I absolutely understand that. But one of the things that we have to also understand is that we have the ability, the capability, the, the, uh, uh, the knowledge to actually do something about it to help ourselves as best we can. Now am I saying that you're going to sort of um, cure yourself or you're going to sort of um, um, protect yourself completely? course I'm not, I can't do that. But all I can say to you is that uh, the more that you can do um, the right things to sort of protect yourself and your loved ones, the more chances that they'll get through this um, well. And when I show you the figures later on, right, you'll see that uh, you know when confronted with uh, the, uh, the fatalities, and I'm not undermining that at all, you know, and uh, my condolences go to everyone who has lost uh, a loved one. Uh, but, you know, the focus is so much on that and not on sort of the people that have got it and have recovered and are recovering. And, and I want to just give you some figures on that, just for you to get a, a, a better perspective, really, a better perspective on it. Okay, so um, let's go straight into it. Uh, so what uh, is a virus? Well, a virus, uh, as we well know, is, um, is it's not a living organism like a fungus, a bacteria, a protozoa, a parasite. It's not one of those. It is sort of basically um, an inert, um, I, I don't even know if you call it an organism, but it's an inert sort of uh, cell, uh, which uh, un unfortunately, you know, there are well over uh, sort of... Um, 100 billion in just one liter of water. It is the most prolific entity that's out there, the most prolific entity that's out there. So the coronavirus is just one of them. And each one of the viruses has a susceptibility to a particular part of a host. And we as human beings are considered hosts. And uh, this particular coronavirus, which is this sort of a cell uh, which has got these protrusions, protein protrusions, uh, going out of it, uh, it is unfortunately, um, it, it likes to uh, attack the lungs. Um, so that's its particular uh, sort of mode of operandi, yeah? Uh, now when you sneeze, and I've got a beautiful picture here, so when you sneeze, right, you're going to sort of blow out up to about 20,000, about 20,000 sort of droplets, yeah? About 20,000 droplets you're going to blow out about 20,000 droplets. Now that's pretty phenomenal. And you could blow them up up to about sort of two uh, to three meters, about two to three meters. Um, so that's not so sort of uh, ideal in any shape or form. Um, so that's why we need that social distancing of about two meters, because it can be up to three to six feet that you could uh, sort of blow it out. And it could live uh, within sort of, um, sort of the surface that it contacts for up to 24 hours. and uh, there is now um, sort of some research which says that it could live in the air for three hours. So you could blow it out and it could be in the air for sort of three hours as well. Um, so um, you know, that's obviously a little bit concerning. So you know, guys, you know, we've got to keep the social distancing. You know, that's so, so important as well. All right? But the other problem is, is it obviously so when you contact it, then um, it's not a problem if you contact it, as long as you're washing your hands regularly, uh, the problem arises when you contact it, you haven't washed your hands, and you actually sort of contact one of your orifices, one of your mucous membrane orifices, like your eyes, your nose, or your mouth, and that's when it sort of gains entry, because it 
upon into through your skin, the skin is a beautiful barrier to it. So it's really important that sort of, um, you know, you wash your hands, but also as difficult as it is for us all, um, you know, is try not to sort of keep touching your face or touching your eyes or your mouth or your nose. And I know that's not easy. It's something that you have to, you know, consciously make an effort to do. Uh, and I'm just going to touch my nose now. Uh, okay, so um, in Latin, um, the virus, the word virus in Latin actually means poison. And this damn thing is poisonous to us. In one litre of seawater, there's about 100 billion, so it is the most prolific entity. I'm not going to call it an organism, an entity uh, that's out there. It's actually sort of a microscopic parasite. And by parasite, what I mean is that it can't live uh, for very long outside, uh, sort of on a surface or uh, outside a host. And we are a host for it. And by, what I mean by that is that it needs us to be able to survive. And uh, most importantly, its basic function is to replicate. It wants to sort of create more of itself, and that's what it needs us for. And its purpose is purely to deliver this RNA material. The RNA is like a genetic material that it can duplicate, so it can make copies of itself. And it needs us, and we are the host for it. Okay, uh, now, um, when the virus sort of comes into uh, your body, the way it does that is that uh, these, um, uh, these protein uh, protrusions what they do is they can attach onto a receptor, onto a receptor on your cell. And this receptor on your cell is uh, normally sort of found, unfortunately, in the alveoli of your lungs. So that's very sort of a ga gaseous exchange uh, uh, part of your lung, uh, where sort of oxygen goes into your blood and carbon dioxide comes out. And there are certain cells within that alveoli that it can attach to. And when it attaches into those cells, what it does is it sort of uh, can either then just take some of that um, membrane of your cell and it can duplicate it around itself so it becomes hidden and it can be go then dormant. And that's a worrying thing um, because if it sort of is able to camouflage itself in sort of your cell uh, membrane, then what it will do is it will basically sort of lay dormant and it will hide there um, till maybe sometime in the winter. Uh, and it normally comes out uh, when you're under stress or you've got some kind of sort of, uh, you know, you pick up some kind of other illness which weakens your immune system uh, or if you're nutritionally deficient as well. Um, so that's why, in, um, you know, when, for example, uh, you go on holiday, you know, and a classic example, you're working really, really hard, really, really hard, you go on holiday and you're living on adrenaline, living on adrenaline, 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 adrenaline and then all of a sudden you go on holiday and your adrenaline levels go down and then all of a sudden, boom, you come down with a cold or a flu or something like that. Because flu and influenza is actually much, much more contagious in the sense that influenza passes from one person to one person to one person to one person and uh, has a, sh a shorter dormancy in the body. So what it means is, is it has what's known as a two and a half uh, dormancy, so it will replicate much, much quicker. So you can pass sort of a flu and influenza on much, much quicker than you can the coronavirus. The coronavirus has sort of anything from a five to a seven and a half day dormancy. So it takes five and a half to seven days before you're able to sort of um, pass it on to, to someone else, or certainly it will be dormant in you before you show the symptoms. So one of the things that, that sort of happens when you sort of uh, reduce your stress levels is your adrenaline levels go down and you start to relax and hey presto, like your nutritional deficiency sort of uh, shows up and then the virus uh, will attack you. And uh, when it does that, of course, it ruins the holiday, um, which, is a, which is a shame. But I'll come back to that in that point in a moment. Remember that point, that when your immune system is depressed, you're gonna get the virus. So what this uh, virus does is if it doesn't sort of just take, uh, take uh, your membrane and cover itself, disguise itself, so that your uh, army um, can't sort of uh, attack it, doesn't recognize it, then what it will do is it will uh, go and attach itself to that receptor on your cell and unfortunately the cell so sort of thinks it's okay, your cell thinks it's okay, and it allows it to sort of put in the RNA Right, which is this genetic material uh, that the virus carries inside it, 
it pushes it, that RNA into the cell. And when it goes into the cell, there is a whole so sort of a, a myriad of systems uh, called ribosomes and proteolytic enzymes and the specific sort of uh, RNA enzymes, which then, unfortunately, help it to copy itself. And so it's like sort of having a uh, photocopier, and that photocopier has been hijacked. Uh, so the cell is able to duplicate and replicate itself again and again and again. And uh, the way it does that is, unfortunately, really clever. Um, it will sort of through the ribosomes, which is a component in your cell that, um, that sort of, uh, uh, copies your uh, DNA material, it will go through and it will basically um, make copies, more copies of that single strand RNA. And once it makes more copies of that, it then needs a cell. So what it also does at the same time is it makes the proteins to make the cell damn clever, damn clever. And so it makes this sort of cell wall as well and the RNA strands. And then of course it makes a prolific number until eventually it sort of uh, breaks the, the cell and uh, then goes out and obviously attacks sort of more uh, cells in your lungs as well. And what then happens unfortunately is that the alveoli, where, which is the, the, get, where the part of your lung that does the uh, gaseous exchange, it begins to collapse, it produces lots of fluid, and that's why people are struggling uh, with breathing. All right? But um, you know, let's not go into the morbidity of it because there's lots of things you can do to help yourself. But that's pretty much how it works. I hope that makes sense. So it attaches, it penetrates, it replicates, and it assembles, and then it releases. So it comes out and it just sort of again starts attacking more of your tissue. All right, now, one of the things that's a sort of, uh, that it also does is it's a sort of, um, it lives, it likes glucose, it likes glucose. And this is interesting, actually, is, um, or it doesn't like glucose, my apologies. There, um, Dr. Eric Berg, which is where I've got most of this material from, he's a chiropractor, he's got an amazing uh, YouTube channel, so uh, all credit to him. Right, this material is taken from him and some of the studies that he's posted on there as well. And there's one study that he sort of talks about where uh, what uh, they found in mice was that, uh, when test tubes, sorry, in test tubes, they found that uh, if you sort of um, increase sort of the, the, uh, the, if, uh, the, if you decrease the glucose, decrease the glucose, so decrease the amount of sugar, sort of in your blood and in your body, right, that sort of um, slowed down the virus. Slow down the virus. Now, glucose is a, a very inflammatory, um, a very inflammatory um, carbohydrate. Uh, it, um, the more that you can reduce your sugar intake down, the better for you. And I don't mean just the white stuff. I'm talking about potatoes, rice, pastas, uh, breads. You know, the more you can reduce those down and focus your diet much more on sort of fresh vegetables. Uh, very little fruit, uh, specific fruits, and also on sort of good quality proteins, uh, then you know, that's what we should really be trying to sort of do at the moment. You stay away from processed foods that contain a lot of, sort of hidden sugars, because the lower you reduce your sugar, the better for you. And, and I'll hold on to that thought, because I'm going to come back to that when I come back onto sort of the vitamins and nutrition that you need. All right, so I'm just going to quickly rub this off. Hope that's just sort of uh, made some sense to you. So what I want to uh, do now is I want to just go through sort of some other susceptibility sort of uh, factors with you as well. So let me just get my notes. So bear with me just for a second. Okay, there's a, quite a bit of research uh, done here. I'd like to um, get this material together for you. And um, now what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the susceptibility. All right, so what... What are the susceptibility uh, parameters? Yeah. So, what makes you susceptible? Yeah. Now, excuse my writing there, but that's that's susceptible. So, what makes you susceptible? Well, one of the things is age. Yeah. So, age, and I'll come to that in a second. Okay. Uh, but there's not much we can do about that. You are the age you are, and there's not much we can do. But obviously, you know. There is a lot we can do in the sense that um, you know we don't have to age badly, and um, you know you've got to look after yourself. It doesn't matter what age you are. You know if you are eating well, if you're moving your body, because uh, movement is is um, is definitely is a sort of uh, 
They are good for your body as long as obviously your joints allow that. And that's where, you know, chiropractic is obviously great for that. Uh, but also necessarily a mindset as well. Those three factors are really important in how well you age, right? It's, and uh, so, age, we can't do much about that, okay? But nutrients, now, the thing is, when I say about age, we can't do much about it. We can't do about it now, because you are the age you are. But please understand, we've got to educate our children. We've got to educate our children now, right, so that as they age, right, they are aging better than perhaps you are, all right? So they've got to age better. They've got to understand, you know, how to look after themselves, how to sort of take the right nutrition, how to sort of do the right exercises. And by educating and teaching them, we can make a much healthier, older sort of age population than perhaps we have now. If we actually look at it, so sort of the older population that came through the Second World War, you know, who are at that age now, from the Second World War, many of them, Right, are much, much healthier than a lot of the people that are sort of reaching that age now. Uh, because unfortunately, you know, we have had much more access to, <coughs> excuse me, we have had much more access to sort of bad food than they did. Now, throughout the day, I'm sort of having my uh, green drinks uh, because I want to sort of keep my nutrition levels high. Um, so, you know, it's really important to sort of help our children to age better now. Now, nutrients. Well, <coughs> nutrients is something that we can do something about. So if we just focus on that for a second, we'll come back to that right at the end where I'll go to specific ones. But if you are not taking the right nutrients, then you're going to have a weak immunity. Yeah, you're going to have a weak immunity. <coughs> if you haven't got enough vitamin C, vitamin A, selenium, zinc in your body, then you are going to have a weak immune system. There's no way around it, okay, because they are important to control and to help your um, immune system. And vitamin C and vitamin D, uh, we're going to come back to in particular, because vitamin D is actually uh, one of the master controllers of your immune system. Now, this is really, really interesting, is when there were some tests done, and what they found was they found that when you sort of deprived uh, the host of vitamins, so let's try and kill this virus. So um, let's kill the virus by actually sort of depriving our body, so starving our body, right, of um, sort of food and essential nutrients. Yeah, now you'd think that by starving yourself, what you're going to do is you're going to starve and kill the virus. Unfortunately not. Now, for a short period of time, fasting is a good thing to do. Uh, so, you know, that's why I mentioned earlier when I was ex explaining about my lunch, you know, what I was having for lunch, was that, you know, you don't need to eat three times a day, all right? Let's face it, that's too much food, okay? Twice a day of good, healthy meal is more than enough, is more than enough. And try and have sort of a break of at least about 12 to 16 hours in between that, that meal, sleep, and the next meal, 12 to 16 hours, would be good. It's called intermittent fasting. Check it out on YouTube. There's some amazing research which shows how your body sort of heals. Now, with viruses, the way it works is that unfortunately, when you deprive yourself of essential vitamins like vitamin D and selenium and zinc, right, hoping to starve the virus uh, and kill it, it doesn't work that way. Uh, the Damn virus, what it does is actually thrives in those conditions and it actually sort of gets even stronger. So if you're vitamin C deficient, the virus will actually get stronger. It'll be much, much more virulent. It'll be much more virulent. And this was a test done in sort of, uh, again, in, in uh, laboratories on, one, on mice. When they took, uh, reduced the selenium and the vitamin C content of um, those mice, what happened was that, unfortunately, the virus became stronger. It began to replicate more, which is why it's so, so important to keep your vitamins and mineral content high, right? And um, as I said, I'll cover that in the end with you. So please, you know, just make sure that nutrition, that you focus some energy on nutrition. Okay, very, very important to do that. And what it does is, is because if you are deficient, then it, it, the virus is able to infect the host uh, easier, quicker, and replicate more. So the more nutritionally deficient you are, the more you're going to sort of uh, 
Uh, more likelihood is, is that the virus will uh, get you and unfortunately will replicate much, much quicker. Okay, so that's uh, mutants. Now, genetics. Now, there's lots and lots of information out there about genetics, and genetics is made uh, to be a very uh, big thing these days because um, uh, pharmacology, uh, pharm uh, pharmaceutical companies, you know, really want you to think that genetics is the be all and end all. And uh, of course, they're going to provide the drugs to uh, help you uh, to sort of sort your genetics out. Um, now, there was a beautiful example uh, in a workshop that I attended on Site K. Site K. Uh, check out Site K, by the way, amazing um, process to help you just deal with stress levels and to deal with all kinds of issues that you may have and to help your subconscious just work better. Uh, but. Um, and it was our, our uh, wonderful, wonderful facilitator, trainer called uh, Duccio. So, uh, Duccio, love and, and blessings to you. Uh, and he gave a really beautiful example of genetics. And um, I'd like to sort of run it past you and see if it relates to you. Now, what um, the way that he made us look at it was like this. He said, okay, so everybody, but everybody, right, has um, sort of all the genes out there. So we all carry the genes for everything that's out there. Cancers, diseases, everything, all of us do. But it's whether it shows up or not. So whether we actually exhibit it. So I have all the genes in me, right, to give me cancer, all the different types of cancers, all the different diseases. I carry those genes in me, I have those genes, okay? Uh, but the way it works is that, say for example, right, I have the genes all lined up in here, yeah? And in front of those genes is a door, yeah? So there's the gene behind me for, I don't know, uh, bowel cancer, right? And here is a door. Now, that door, right, is not going to open up as long as what I do, right, in my daily life on a day-to-day -day basis is I do the right things, like take the right nutrition, Right? I basically uh, make sure that my mindset is in the right way, I move my body, I exercise my body, I make sure my bowels are working well. And as long as I do that, then that door between the gene and between sort of out there, between it showing up, will stay shut. The problem arises when we have some kind of stress, some kind of uh, trauma, we have um, a nutritional deficiency, we have some sort of, something happens in our life uh, which then sort of makes us sort of open that door. If that door is opened, then the likelihood is, is that gene will display itself. This is something called epigenetics, epigenetics. And there's a wonderful, wonderful uh, book called The Biology of Belief, The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton, one of my heroes. I was very fortunate to sort of uh, meet up with him and uh, sort of uh, learn from him as well. And uh, he mentions and his whole and teaches all about epigenetics and how you, you are in control of what or how that gene expresses itself and if it expresses itself. And that is so powerful, so powerful. And um, now this is why I love sort of about Wim Hof. You know, I mentioned, uh, I spoke about Wim Hof yesterday with the fact that he is trying to empower us. He's trying to empower us to help us understand. Right, that um, you know, we are in, in control, and as long as we do the right things, we can actually help ourselves. And his process, his breathing process, one of the things it does is, is it promotes adrenaline. It promotes adrenaline, and I'll come to that in a second. So, genetics. So genetics is not really that important, because as long as you are doing the right things, you're eating the right things, you've got the right mindset, then you don't really need to sort of worry too much about that, okay? Um, so genetics, unless of course, you know, you are in that unfortunate group that have sort of uh, got uh, problems already, autoimmune conditions and all of that already, okay? So um, now, number four is the immune system. The immune system. Now the immune system, now if the immune system is weak, hopefully you're understanding this now, if the immune system is weak, you're going to be more susceptible to it, okay? And one of the things that you need to also sort of uh, be aware of is that your gut flora, your gut flora is really, really important. Because your gut flora, there's three kilograms of bacteria that you should be carrying around with you 
in your gut system are really important for creating anti-inflammatory sort of chemicals, for helping you to uh, create vitamin K, for helping you to break down some of your foods, to break down your bile. So they are really, really important because they also form sort of a barrier against the bad uh, sort of uh, bacteria as well, to, so that they can't stick to the lining of the large intestines. Uh, so they are important and you really should be looking at that. And one of the best ways of sort of helping yourself with that, along with vitamin C, and I'll mention it again, is sauerkraut. But not sort of any old sauerkraut, it's certainly not one with vinegar in it, right? But one that's salt and water, salt and water. And this is a lovely, lovely sort of uh, sauerkraut you can get from Amazon. There's different types. It's a company called the Sauerkraut Company. Check it out on um, Amazon. And uh, this one is kimchi kraut. Uh, it's fermented and it's unpasteurized and it's living which means then that so the gut bacteria is in there, but also the vitamin C as well. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so obviously sort of one of the problems that uh, we have is that the prolific use of antibiotics and steroids uh, and other sort of drugs. And these drugs can affect sort of our um, gut flora. So if you have had um, sort of some need for antibiotics or uh, steroids, then I encourage you, I encourage you, to please sort of uh, take some uh, good bacteria, some probiotics. Here at the clinic, uh, one of the things that we recommend to our patients and we take ourselves is a product called BioCult. BioCult, it's not expensive, all right, and I really encourage you to have a look at that. It's called BioCult, BioCult, but sauerkraut, yeah? Um, you can make it yourself. I mean, you know, we've got all time, got time on our hands now, so go onto YouTube and you can actually make your own sour sauerkraut as well. And there are some incredible videos on YouTube helping you to do that as well. Okay, so now, so that's sort of the immune system. We'll come back to that in a minute because I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the nutrients. Yeah, and I told you about the experiment with the rats where, where they did, what they did was they reduced their selenium and their vitamin C and they found that basically the virus was much more prolific. So, you know, it's really important to boost our immune system up and... Um, your adrenal glands and adrenaline are really important and one of the things that Wim Hof Methods of Breathing does, it promotes your adrenaline, it increases your adrenaline. And adrenaline sort of promotes something called, forget, don't worry about the chemical names, it's called interleukin-10. And interleukin, what interleukin-10 does, reduces inflammation but increases your white blood cells, increases your white blood cells. So it makes more of the army to go out and fight uh, the enemy, to fight the virus. So um, it's really, really important to make sure that uh, you're nutritionally uh, sort of fit and healthy. And by doing the Wim Hof breathing method as well, you're upping your adrenaline levels, right? But in a very controlled manner, because not you're you're pushing up your adrenaline by doing the breathing method, but you're not so hyper. You're not all excited. You're not trying to run away from that saber toothed tiger or whatever. Uh, what you're doing is actually when you do it. And I've done it twice already today in the morning and then again at lunchtime I was teaching sort of a, a dear, dear friend of mine. Um, what, what it does for you is it totally relaxes you. So although you've got this high adrenaline in your body, right, by doing that sort of breathing method, you're actually really, really relaxed and you feel great. So please, if you haven't already, check out the Wim Hof breathing method, okay? It's five minutes, five minutes out of your days, guys. You know, I really would encourage you to do it. Really would encourage you to do it. And this evening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show do a very short video. Uh, it's only going to be about 10 minutes, and I'm going to be showing you a very short, sharp um, method of, of getting into that sort of breathing method, okay? Um, so, now, the other one is, um, this is number five, and it's chronic disease. Chronic disease. Now, unfortunately... There isn't much that we can do about chronic disease. Now, if you've got it, you know, then, um, you know, absolutely take the vitamins, take the, take the nutrients, yeah, make sure that, you know, you're doing the best that you can with exercise, make sure that, you know, you're, you're thinking positively, because, you know, we've all heard stories of how sort of people have totally, totally healed themselves uh, by uh, just, you know, thinking happy thoughts, thinking positive thoughts, you know, having some sort of... Uh, Happy sort of uh, social um, 
uh, not gatherings, but having you know people sort of interact with them in a positive way, and that's something we can do now. I mean, there's this house party sort of out by Glebe, you know, where we can communicate with each other. You know, let's keep our spirits up. You know, let's keep sort of happy. Let's keep sort of as positive as we can, because what that's doing is is increasing our endorphin levels. It's making us feel good, and all of that is going to help you to get stronger and fitter and be able to deal with anything like that, okay? Now, I've got the cameras, I've got the phones turned the other way, so I can't see any of your comments. So if you are putting questions on that, I will try and go back and answer them, okay? But I'm also going to give you some details later on, like with my phone number on it, but also, you know, Facebook message me if you have any specific questions, all right? Um, okay, so uh, chronic disease, unfortunately, you know, if you've got it, then, you know, just do the best you can and you, you know, you probably will get through this. You probably will get through this. You know, just make sure that you're doing the best that you can. Because let's face it, guys, you know, what else can we do? We can only do the best that we can. But you've got to do the best that you can. You know, you've got to do the best that you can. You know, let's not, let's not just, you know, be sort of lethargic about this. You know, we've got to do it. It's got to be done. Okay, now... The last one is from stress. Now stress. Well, stress is one of the biggest, biggest problems that uh, the world faces. Um, and unfortunately, uh, it hasn't gone away. In fact, it's gone up, right? Because uh, you know, this is a very, very stressful situation for all of us. So anything that we can do to sort of uh, reduce our stress levels uh, is really good. And the Wim Hof breathing method is really good for doing that. It's just one of many, many um, Psych K can definitely help, uh, meditation can definitely help, yoga can definitely help. You know, find your way, find your way of reducing uh, the stress levels, yeah? Now, adrenals. Now, adrenals are really, really uh, important because they are basically where adrenaline is produced. And they did some experiment where what they did was they took these white mice and they removed uh, the adrenal glands. Um, and what they found uh, was they found that those mice were much more susceptible to infections and to disease and uh, to viruses and uh, all kinds of sort of issues. So you remove the adrenal glands and it became a problem because one of the things that adrenaline does is adrenaline sort of boosts your uh, uh, T cells, your killer cells, which are the ninjas. You know, they're the ones that sort of uh, are able to sort of kill the cells and then replicate and remember and reproduce more killer cells. Um, so, um, if by removing the adrenal glands, that's what happens. So, uh, we definitely want to support our adrenal glands. And the way we do that is by the breathing method and by sort of uh, keeping our stress levels down. The other thing is, there's another condition called Addison's disease. And Addison's disease is where, unfortunately, you know, the adrenal glands aren't working. And one of the things they found was that so sort of in those uh, particular so subjects who have got Addison's disease, you know, they are given sort of adrenal sort of... Um, um, hormones to help them, and if they're not so given those, and they are much more susceptible uh, to infection, to bacterial, viral infections, and issues with their health. So adrenal glands are really important, and we want to support them. And there, and just go onto YouTube. There is lots of sort of things you can do to help and support your adrenal glands. Okay, so do please have a look and research that as well. Okay, so now. Let's have a look at some figures. So what I want to do now is I want to just go over some figures, right? Because one of the things that uh, we keep getting sort of told all the time is about sort of the fatalities, right? And what I want to do is I want to turn, turn it on its head and I want to look at some other uh, figures instead, okay? But before I do that, I want to show you something. And this is something which uh, really, really sort of, um, when I first saw this movie, um, it just was a bit of a aha moment for me. And um, now, more than ever, um, it, is, it is really, really relevant. Okay, so um, I hope you can see this, right? but it's a scene from The Matrix, and it's a scene where a smith uh, has uh, caught Morpheus, and he's interrogating him, and he's, he makes this little speech he makes this little speech, and um, when I first saw this, I thought, aha. Okay, so let's see if it uh, resonates with, uh, with you as well.
Hopefully you can see that. Not you can hear it. Okay, I hope you understood that. I hope you've got that. Uh, if you haven't, check it out. If you just put into YouTube, so the Matrix, um, the virus scene, virus scene. And I think Smith put it beautifully. You know, we as human beings, you know, what are we? You know, we're not a true mammal. You know, we go into an environment, we absolutely destroy it, and then what do we do? We move on to the next environment. And uh, what, other organ what other entity does that? The virus. So when I first saw that movie, I thought, aha, and here we are now. I just hope that sort of uh, when all this is uh, done, and, done and dusted, which it will be, God willing, it will be, right, that um, what will happen is that um, it will be different. We have to learn. You know, this is a kick up the backside. And I really hope, you know, that something good comes out of this. Um, I really hope that something good comes out of this. Okay, so let's just uh, carry on. So what I want to do now is I want to just talk a little bit about sort of the uh, fatality rates, all right? And, and we're going to just look at age to start with first. We're just going to look at age. So this is what we know, right? What, what, what sort of is, is available out there, the information that's available out there at the moment, right? So if you're 80 years old, right, or 80 plus, then there's a fatality rate Fatality rate, right, of about 14.8%. 14.8%. Now, please understand, okay, that this is not given. This is not given. Just because you're 80, right, doesn't mean that you're going to be one of that 14.8%. All right, look at sort of the health ministers. I mean, I think her, her mother was um, 83 and she had really mild symptoms. It really depends on what you've done in the past and what you're doing now. What you're doing now, you are self-isolating, you're boosting up your immune system, you know, you're looking after yourself, you are trying to move as much as you can. Now, you know, a simple thing to do if you can't move your body, right, is just basically contract all your muscles, hold for about five seconds, relax. Contract all your muscles, relax. If all you can do is that, then great. Have a go at the breathing exercises, you know, get your lungs moving, get your lungs sort of exercising. So just because you're 80 plus, right, does not mean that you're going to be in one of those 48%, right? Understand that, okay? But it's 14.8%. Now, 70 plus, you're looking at sort of 8%, yeah? So it comes down quite a lot, okay? Get that. It comes down considerably, right, to 8%. Now, if you're 60 plus, right, then it's going to be 3.6%. So 3.6%, 60, 3.6%. But again, right, don't take these figures and think, oh my God, take these figures and think, I'm not going to be one of those. I am not going to be one of those. Because actually, I am in the next one, right, which is 50 plus. 50 plus, and we're looking at 1.3%. 1.3%. Okay, 50 plus, we're looking at 1.3%. And I'm not going to be one of those. All right, God willing, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that I'm not one of those. And neither do you. Neither do you. Now, 40 plus, 
Okay, we're looking at sort of a 0.4. So 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, right at 40 plus. And 30 and 20, right, and 10, right, you're looking at 0.2. So 0.2%, 0.2%, yeah? 0.2%. So, you know, you really have to understand Right, that um, the, the chances of you surviving this are really, really high, are really high. But you can improve those chances by the attitude that you have, by what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, as far as your nutrition is concerned, as far as your exercise and movement is concerned, and as far as your uh, mindset is concerned. Okay, so now, what I want to do now is I want to sort of just go over some other figures with you. Now, if we have a look at the Ebola, okay, so let's look at the Ebola. Now, the Ebola, right, had 33,577 33, sort of, uh, cases, right, so 33,577 cases for Ebola, okay, and out of those, 13,000 13,000 deaths, yeah? So 3,000 and just over 13,000 deaths, which meant then that it had a fatality of about 40.4%, 40.4%, and it was in nine countries. It, it was controlled and it was able to sort of be sustained within nine countries. So Ebola, 33,577, 13,000 deaths, and see if I've got a date for that. When did that come out? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, I'll come back to that. So Ebola, so 40% um, sort of fatality and nine countries, nine countries, okay? 40%, 40% fatality. Now, if we have SARS, actually, let's go to, yeah, SARS. Okay, so SARS, yeah? That was in 2002, 2002, yeah, 2002. So SARS occurred in 2002, and it, there were 8,000, just over 8,000 people that were infected with it, all right, and 774 deaths, 774 deaths, all right, and that, made a percentage of 9.6, 9.6%. So Ebola, 40%, okay, SARS, 9.6%, and that was controlled in 29 countries, and that was in 2002, 2002. So SARS, 8,000, or just over 8,000 cases, 774 deaths, right, 9.6%, sort of basically fatality, yeah? and 29 countries. Now, let's look at, at Mars, all right, or MERS. Let's look at MERS. Now, MERS occurred in 2012. So, MERS occurred in 2012. That, again, was a respiratory uh, virus. And that, basically, the figures for that were 2,494. 2,494. There were 858 deaths, 858 deaths, right, which meant that that had a fatality of 34.4, 34.4%, okay, fatality. And that was in 28 countries, 28 countries, 28 countries. So, MERS, 2,494 cases, yeah, 858 deaths. 34%. Ebola, 40%. Uh, SARS, 9.6%. And MERS, 34.4%. Now, these figures that I'm going to write on here now are unfortunately a few weeks old. All right, I did have a look, but I couldn't sort of get any really up to date figures. All right, so let's just look at COVID 19 then. All right, so COVID 19. Now, COVID-19, at this time, this figure has, has grown 
quite considerably, okay? But let's just have a look at it. So it's 122,000, 122,000 cases, 122,000 cases, okay? 4,000, three, uh, well, let's say 5,000. Yeah, so 5,000, 5,000 deaths, 5,000 deaths, yeah? And that figure equates to about 3.9%, 3.9% fatality. And at that time, it was in 113 countries worldwide. So, COVID-19, figures from about two weeks ago, right, 122,000, 5,000 fatalities, 122,000, 122,000 people had it. 5,000 fatalities, 3.9% in 113 countries worldwide. 113 countries worldwide. Now, it is really, really important that we get some perspective on here. Okay, it is, it is a problem. It is an absolute sort of a threat to our economy, to our lifestyle, and to everything. Okay, but one of the things that you must take on board is that, you know, do everything the government is saying, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to dampen that peak so that our wonderful, wonderful National Health Service can sort of uh, cope with uh, the people that are going to struggle once they've got this virus, okay? So we absolutely need to sort of do very well. And looking at the figures, Bedford is doing exceptionally well. We've only got a few cases here, right? So a handful of cases, and that's brilliant. So guys, you know, keep doing all the right things, right, by the self-isolation and the social distancing as well. But please, 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 also take on board the fact that you can do so much more to help yourselves, your family and your loved ones, your friends, your neighbours, right? Everybody that you care, that circle, that circle of trust and um, family that you have around you, your friends, all of those, and more. You know, get this message out there. You know, by taking the right nutrition, by the right mindset, you know, you can do so much more to help yourself, right? Yes, it, it is a problem. 122,000 cases, yeah? 5,000 deaths, 3.9%. These are figures that are a few weeks old, okay? The figures have sort of uh, increased quite substantially, right? But we have to understand that we can do so much more. Do everything that the government is telling us to, right? And you're doing a great job, as I said, here in Bedfordshire, right? But, you know, let's do everything we can at home to make sure that we're doing the right things. Right nutrition, exercise, right mindset, have fun. You know, make, make every day a fun day. You know, make sure that you're having some fun throughout the day. You know, that you're, you're, you're laughing. Because laughter is, is uh, the best medicine. Laughter definitely is the best medicine. All right, so let's finish this off, okay? Let's finish this off. Now, we're gonna finish this off by just looking at, okay, so what can I do? What can I do, right, to help myself and my family? What can I do, right? So let's have a look. Well, one of the first things that you can do is vitamin C, is you want to take vitamin C, right? It is so, so important. Now, one of the things that you have to understand about vitamin C is that vitamin C is uh, water soluble. It's one of the water soluble vitamins, which means that you're not gonna store it. So you have to take it on a daily basis. You have to take it on a daily basis. And uh, um, so you can't rely on taking it once a week or once, a, once a every other day. You have to take it every day. There is an experiment going on at this moment, right, in Wuhu, where what they've done is it's a Chinese study. They're intravenously injecting Right, the population in Wuhu, they're, they're injecting them intravenously because it, vitamin C, you can inject it intravenously. We have a wonderful, wonderful lady here. Give me a second. Right, who actually sort of uh, does this here as well. Yeah, I don't know if she's still doing it because obviously the social distancing, so it would be a problem. But you know, this is something you want to sort of consider sort of afterwards as well. I mean, it's just. Unfortunately, you know, it's not being done now, and this is something the National Health Service should be offering, but that's too much, uh, too much to ask for. Uh, but you know, vitamin C, intravenous vitamin C. So they're doing this experiment in Wuhu, 
<coughs> and then what they're doing is they're intravenously injecting vitamin C of up to 24,000 milligrams. Now the recommended dose, right, is just 70 to 90. 70 to 90, yeah? And you get, from one serving of, of sauerkraut, you're gonna get over 700, 700, yeah? So get sauerkraut, get sauerkraut. So they're injecting these people and they're injecting them for up to sort of uh, seven days. They're intravenously injecting them for seven days consecutively with 24,000 milligrams to see what kind of results it has. And I am absolutely sure that it's going to be really, really positive, right? So um, vitamin C. Now, how do you get vitamin C? Well, sauerkraut, um, unfortunately, you know, you know, our fruit and vegetables doesn't contain that much anymore. So you are going to have to have a look uh, at a source for it. Um, you want to go for ascorbate rather than ascorbic acid. Ascorbate rather than ascorbic acid because ascorbic acid may upset your stomach a little bit. And you want to be taking it regularly throughout the day because it is uh, water soluble. So you want to be taking it regularly throughout the day. The only thing that will happen to you if you take too much of it is you're going to get the runs. Right? So uh, you may get a little bit of loose in the bowel movement. But that's all that can possibly happen as long as you've got a good source of vitamin C. So powder or capsules, but you want to be taking more than once a day, more than once a day. One of the things that uh, vitamin C does, it's, it's well known for its antiviral properties. Um, it sort of uh, will reduce the time that you have a cold. I know that when I used to sort of get any kind of sort of symptoms, uh, if I get a cold, I can't remember the last time I had a cold, but uh, when I did, or what if I did, then what I would do is I would just take vitamin C and I take it every hour, every hour. This is something that a wonderful uh, nutritionist and teacher called Patrick Holford, Patrick Holford, uh, check him out. He's written so many books on nutrition. He's English and uh, he's got so many books out there. Now's a good time to learn and to study and just increase your knowledge about these uh, kind of things, yeah? And uh, he used to recommend it in one of his lectures that I attended, uh, that you take the vitamin C every hour, every hour, until you get a bit of a loose bowel movement, and then you sort of slow down, and you take it every couple of hours, and then you do it again. And what he said was that within a couple of days, you know, he, the symptoms uh, were relieved. And that's what I do when I sort of uh, have any issues like that. Um, it obviously sort of also reduces, uh, reduces any risk to the lungs, so it helps the lungs. It reduces the susceptibility to viruses, and it also increases your white blood cell count as well. Increases your white blood cell counts. So what viruses do, and this is so damn clever, right, is they deplete your vitamin C, um, and they, because vitamin C upregulates the killer T cells. Remember I mentioned the T killer cells, the killer T cells, right, which are your ninjas. They're the ones that go in there, they kill the virus, and they learn, and then they replicate uh, the, the, uh, the killer cells. And uh, unfortunately, what uh, uh, viruses do is they down-regulate the vitamin C. So you need more. You need more of it, right? So, um, and also, one of the other things that uh, vitamin C does, it produces a, uh, a substance called interferon. Interferon. Interferon was in the press um, a few, quite a few years ago. And there was a big thing being made of it. And then it suddenly disappeared. But interferon is really, really potent. Because what it does is it destroys uh, the, uh, the virus, so it actually destroys the virus, but also what it does is it sort of uh, kills the, the cells around so sort of, um, that, uh, that virus as well. Um, so that's really good, you know, any, any cell that's infected, I mean, okay? So vitamin C, and uh, what's the best way to get it? Uh, bell peppers, kiwi fruit, go to YouTube, go to Google Images, put in highest content of vitamin C, and then you know, just print yourself some uh, list there, and that's the kind of food you want to be taking if you don't want to buy any vitamin C, all right? Now, vitamin E, vitamin E, really, really important, a fat-soluble vitamin, so, you know, unfortunately, you get it in meat, but you do get it in nuts and seeds and uh, fat as well, um, so that would be really good, and butter, a good uh, quality butter, and selenium, now, selenium you get from nuts, selenium has been shown to be exceptionally powerful, and an experiment they did in rats, they found that when you reduce selenium and you reduce zinc in the rats, in the mice, sorry, in the mice, uh, the virus uh, was much, much more prolific, much more active. So selenium and zinc would be really good. And zinc is the other one, right? So zinc would be a really good one uh, to supplement as well. 
and um, uh, there are different types of zinc and uh, let me just see if I can find um, the uh, so bear with me while I just quickly pull up the zinc uh, yeah here we go yeah the zinc the most effective form of zinc is uh, zinc acetate which releases 100% of ionic zinc or zinc gluconate zinc gluconate right which releases 72% of ionic zinc or zinc gluconate glycine which releases about 57% so the first one is zinc acetate, zinc acetate, uh, zinc gluconate, or zinc gluconate glycine. Okay, so those are the, uh, the most effective forms. So if you can, get zinc acetate or zinc gluconate. It's quite difficult to get sort of the, the zinc acetate. I did have a look to see if I could get some as well. Uh, but zinc gluconate is, is there. So uh, look at that as well. And black elderberry, black elderberry is a really, really good um, sort of form. Of, uh, vitamin C as well and it has uh, some anti antiviral uh, capabilities as well and black seed oil black seed oil is um, also been shown I mean that's been used for thousands and thousands of years uh, by sort of the Asian um, sort of Indian Asian uh, communities and uh, black seed oil is also been shown to be very powerful uh, antiviral as well so that's something else to look at so uh, vitamin C zinc uh, selenium and also um, uh, black seed oil, black seed oil and elderberry, elderberry, okay? Now vitamin D, now vitamin D is interesting because one of the things that uh, viruses do is right, uh, a virus is actually used to sort of um, reduce uh, the efficacy of the vitamin D uh, because they, they, I mean, I don't know how they do this. I mean, it's amazing, you know, but they seem to know that vitamin D is really important as a modulator, as a modulator sort of for your, um, um, for your sort of uh, immune response. So they dampen the vitamin D response, which is why, you know, a lot of us uh, will uh, get uh, problems during the winter and during sort of uh, the, uh, the cold and, and the dark sort of days, uh, because um, as inefficient as it is, we do produce some vitamin D through our skin uh, when we expose our skin to it without sunscreens, without sunscreens. Um, you know, I mean, certainly I, I don't recommend being out in the sun all day. If you're going to, if you're one of those people who goes and lies on the beach all day long, um, you know, half naked, uh, then that's great. You know, that's the right thing for you and you're enjoying it. So fantastic. And also you're going to need the sunscreen. Uh, but what I tend to do is I tend to sort of uh, use uh, coconut oil as a moisturizer and I will sort of uh, wear as little as possible, but I won't be in the sun for longer than about 15 minutes. And then I will sort of go in the shade and then I'll just keep sort of exposing myself, exposing myself in the sense of sort of going out in the sun. I don't mean exposing myself, um, you know, for 15 minutes at a time. But I will not use sunscreen. But that's me. You have to make the decisions that you make, right? I'm not here to um, make you do anything. I'm not here to sort of, uh, uh, I'm not here to force anything down your throat. I'm just here to give you information. And I, and, you know, it's, it's done with um, totally unselfish uh, reasons. But anyway, all right, so vitamin D. Okay, so um, that, that, that's it, guys. Okay, that's the end of it, all right? So uh, thank you for uh, bearing with it. Um, you know, it, it, I am very passionate about it. Hopefully that sort of uh, came through because what I really want is I want all of us, right, uh, to, to get the message that we can do so much to help ourselves and, um, you know, we have to start now. It's not about tomorrow. It's about now. You know, we have to do it now. And, um, you know, our loved ones as well. I mean, I delivered a whole uh, bag full of nutrients to my dad yesterday um, because, you know, um, he is in one of those high categories. Um, so, um, you know, I would really um, love for him to sort of uh, get through this um, in, the, in the best of health and the best way that he possibly can. And, um, for all of you that have lost uh, friends, I had some uh, friends yesterday who lost some um, some close friends uh, to this damn virus. Um, you know, my heart held, my heartfelt condolences. Uh, but you know, come on, you know, we can do this. We can fight. We can sort of make ourselves stronger, and we can beat this. We can beat this. And just remember that this too will pass. This too will pass. That's my mantra. Let it be yours. This too will pass. But we have.
have to be proactive. We have to be proactive. Start today. God bless. Send you lots of love and blessings. See you later. Bye for now.